Welcome back to the 2016-2017 NBA preview. Today we are covering the 14th ranked team, the Atlanta Hawks. My name is Josh, your NVers, and with me today, my co-host. How's it going, guys? The king of the fourth quarter. Welcome back to the NBA preview. Probably one of the more trickier teams to grade in the NBA preview, considering they have a lot of new faces, and they also have a lot of new roles for certain players on this team still. But before we take a look at that, let's take a look at what was happening with this team last season. Last season, there was a whole shift between point guards and a battle between Jeff Teague and Dennis Schroeder. Who's the starting point guard on this team? There was a lot of questions of that and there was a lot of trade rumors uh, last season of Jeff Teague. And now Jeff Teague is no longer a part of this organization. A big question that I have, is Dennis Schroeder capable of leading this team? And I guess that's what we're going to find out we're this season. find that out, yeah. Um, they, they put the ball in his hands and... He's got to do something with it. I feel like a lot is weighing on his shoulders, especially now that he's essentially their point guard. Could go either way with this team, and I hope that Dennis Schroeder is able, able to do a capable job of leading this team to the playoffs. Yeah, over the past couple seasons, the Atlanta Hawks have been consistently good, but not too great. I mean, there's one point where they were leading the Eastern Conference, but got to the playoffs, it kind of fell apart. So, I mean, a lot of people, I know this may hurt you, Josh, but a lot of people consider this team to be the Spurs of the East. I mean, they definitely are with that that bum Tiago splitter taking up cash space <laughs> on the bench. Yeah, so I, I that's why I feel like they're in a good place right where they're ranked right now, just because they've been consistently good, and I don't see that changing, even though they did make some significant moves this offseason. Yeah, I mean, they have Coach Bud, like I said, the bum Tiago splitter who was hurt the majority of the season. So I guess that's why they call the Spurs 2.0. So with that said, let's move on to the offseason moves, and let's take a look at what the Atlanta Hawks did to help improve. They acquired Dwight Howard, Jared Jack, lost Jeff Teague and Al Horford, and drafted Tarian Prince at number 12, and DeAndre Bembry at number 21. This offseason was definitely an interesting one for the Atlanta Hawks, kind of replacing Al Horford with Dwight Howard. What do you think about that? Is that an upgrade or a downgrade? In my opinion, people are going to hate me for saying this, but in college, Al Horford played the power forward position, and although he's no longer with this, with this team and he's and the new team he is on, he's most likely going to be playing the center position unless they do any moves by trade deadline. The Paul Millsap and Dwight Howard combo is really nice, especially the way Paul Millsap is coming to his own and being able to stretch the floor. So I, I really do like the Dwight Howard situation with this Atlanta Hawks team, and I hope Dwight Howard is able to not go back to the magic Dwight, but at least find a rejuvenated self because he's apparently he's been practicing on his mid-range jump shot. If you guys I saw those, I saw, saw those, those, videos. those those clips that he was posting i believe on like instagram or twitter hopefully that can translate into his actual game because he definitely needs a mid-range jump shot because unfortunately his post presence like he doesn't have any moves he's just big and athletic and athleticism isn't going to be there forever yeah I, I expected us to actually disagree on this i thought we were going to say al horford um being there was better for the team but i actually liked the dwight howard signing a lot um al uh, horford I, had I, a I better didn't say season. i like the dwight howard signing a lot but I, I i like it i like it i hope I, for the no, best I, I guess I'm in a minority because I like it a lot. Um, a lot. Uh, mm. Dwight Howard finally gets another chance to prove that he still has game. He's finally home. Yeah, he's finally home. He has a new identity, changing his number to eight for some reason. I do think that here in Atlanta, he would get the touches that he needs to prove that he is still a player in this league. I'm not saying he's going to be as dominant as he was when he was in Orlando or anything like that. But his last couple teams, Houston Rockets, LA Lakers, they didn't really put respect on his name he was not getting the touches True. and i think Atlanta, because they had, gonna they had ball dominant guards and kobe yep. bryant and james harden now mm -hmm. they got cal corver and ken bazemore so i feel like he's gonna get a lot more touches and uh if it is the spurs 2.0 the spurs eastern conference version then the ball there should have a lot of ball movement and dwight howard should be getting open shots and being able to score more in the post and i'm, I'm really excited to see that i'm definitely excited to see that so i do think the um, Dwight Howard signing was a really good one for them. I like it. I like it. We can it. move on to the trade now, the Jeff Teague trade. They put the ball in Dennis Struder's hand saying that, okay, this is your team to run now. And they were battling pretty much all season long. Atlanta fans were saying, some of them were saying, I like Jeff Teague. I like Dennis Struder. And the management said, okay, Struder is our guy. Um, now, that, that one is a little puzzling to me. They were trying to get rid of Jeff Teague. At one point, they left him alone in the arena with his pizza. Did you see that? Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that story, no. Yeah, they, they completely forgot about Jeff Teague, and he was he had to call like an Uber or something. So <laughs> I guess he should have 
you know, taking notice. Like, okay, this may be my last year here. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally enjoy Jeff Teague as a player. Last year, he was a better player than Dennis Schroeder. Mm -hmm. This year is going to be interesting now that Jeff Teague's on a different team and now Schroeder has essentially the ball in his hand is is able to do the majority of the offense and, you know, facilitating. It's, it's really going to be interesting to see how both of their careers play out with their new teams or not their new teams, but their new roles. I think that um, the Jared Jack signing is a lot of insurance because Jared Jack can True. still be a player. I know he was injured for a majority of last year, but he's I, coming I home think... too. all NBA players are coming home, apparently, except for Kevin Durant. Except for Kevin Durant. Yeah, I do think that him being signed is nice insurance just in case Struder does not perform the way they wanted him to. They got a nice backup that can come in. Um, the draft was kind of puzzling to me as well because they drafted two guys who seem to be very similar. Kind of a 3 and D type guys. So um, I'm excited to kind of see how they decide to use these guys. If they're going to be in rotation this year, or they're going to let them progress a little bit more. But um, this offseason was definitely... Definitely an, uh, a long one for them. I mean, Tarian Prince is probably a small forward, power forward, while uh, Ben Bree is a shooting guard, small forward. So uh, they'll, they'll have roles in the future. I'm not sure uh, if we take a look at the rotation in a few seconds, how that's going to play out, especially because uh, the rotation is pretty nice. Yeah, so let's, let's take a look at the rotation. So the rotation for this Atlanta Hawks team, this is what the projected starting lineup looks like. Dennis Schroeder, Kyle Korver, Kent Bazemore, Paul Millsap, and Dwight Howard. I like that front court. Yeah, it's a good one. The bench looks like Jared Jack, Thabo Cephalosha, Mike Scott, Mike Muscala, and Tiago Splitter. They have a, a pretty solid bench, and Thabo Cephalosha could probably uh, go in and out of the lineup considering uh, certain matchups. Cal Corver probably wouldn't be the best for that. But with, with this bench and with this starting rotation, it's going to be hard to see the young guys get any minutes, especially because Tim Hardaway last season, he was in the doghouse. They, they rarely played that man. A key part in this starting rotation for the Atlanta Hawks team, in my opinion, is Kent Bazemore. You know, he, he went from uh, being the 350th ranked NBA player on the ESPN list to now proving himself and getting a big contract with this Atlanta Hawks team. He could have got money somewhere else, but he decided to stay with the Atlanta Hawks because he feels like they were the first team to actually give him a chance and able to push him the way they did and give him a role in the starting rotation. And now this year, he's going to be having some big minutes and hopefully he's able to continue playing well and keep improving with this Hawks team. Yeah, big money too. They signed him to some really big money. So they believe in the guy, and I, I do too. I do too. Yeah, it's definitely a feel good story. Kent Blazemore. Kent Blazemore. Ch Chance the rapper looking like. Speaking of blazing, they got Mike Scott coming off their bench. Got in a little trouble last year <laughs> with some with some drugs there, him and his uh his friend. Yeah, apparently he it wasn't him, it was his friend that had it or his I think it was his friend or his brother. One, one of those two. two. And uh, he took the blame. So now for the projections for this Atlanta Hawks team. Last year, this Atlanta Hawks team went 48 and 34, tied with a lot of teams in the Eastern Conference. Over under, where do you see this team being this year? I said they stay the same, about 48 wins. Uh, just because they, they did make the moves, of course, losing Al Horford and Jeff Teague. But the guys that they brought in, I think, would kind of fill those shoes quite nice, but not enough for them to be better than last year. I'm, I'm going to say something else. I'm going to say under, but not by much. I see them winning... 45 to 47 wins uh, this upcoming season. And that's because not the Al Horford and Dwight Howard situation or the Dennis Schroeder situation. It's just that a lot of other teams in the East that weren't good last year got better. And I feel like the Hawks didn't do as much as they probably should have. I like the Dwight Howard situation. That alone doesn't seem enough to push this team over the top, especially with uh, Dennis Schroeder now being the starting point guard. It's just, it's kind of risky saying that they're going to stay the same or even be better than they were last season record-wise. Yeah, I can, I can see that, but I, I'm going to stick with mine too. So with that said, these are our projections for this Atlanta Hawks team. Uh, they're going to be in the playoffs, hopefully in the playoffs, and hopefully Dwight Howard is able to prove that he's a quality player still and is able to you know, revitalize his career and show that he's not a bum. Do you agree or disagree with our rankings on this Atlanta Hawks team? Do you feel like they should be higher? lower let us know in the comment section below along with leaving a like on the video if you did enjoy uh, share this on any social media as well and speaking of social media all of our social media links will be in the description for you to check out but with that said we really hope you guys enjoyed thank you guys so much for watching be looking out for tomorrow's video